awesome. How awesome is that, man? Do you feel empowered today? I feel empowered today. And, and, and let me tell you, this is, my, um, this is my favorite church in the whole world. And, and, and I'm, I'm being for real. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Um, Pastor Jason, uh, obviously, you know he's the real deal. But, but for me, you know, I think what makes him the real deal is um, he, at least for, for my life, and we haven't even talked about this, but um, he's, he's my pastor. Pastor Jason's been my pastor. Um, he's never told me he was my pastor. I've never had to ask him to be my pastor. But when you actually invest your time in people, it becomes evident one moment. You go, wait, this person empowers, encourages me, uplifts me in ministry, encourages me to walk with Jesus. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful to be a part of the river. I feel like an honorary staff member around here. Can I get an amen right now? That's how I feel. Yeah, and, and my family back at the Life LB, and they'll probably get mad that I said this is my favorite church, but we'll work through our issues. They're watching to, uh, today. They're watching, and, and I'm excited. Would you guys mind giving a round of applause to my church family that's watching back in Long Beach? I love you guys. I miss you guys. Well, look, I want to talk to you real quick about making a plan. Making a plan. You know, God gives us 24 hours every single day. He gives us some money, right? Amen. Uh, <laughs> he gives us time. He gives us relationships. And, and as the worst planner on the planet, I feel absolutely fit to preach to you about making a plan. Can I get a big amen right now? <laughs> right? Because any pastor that feels fit to preach on anything, you know, they're, the, they're probably the worst at it, right? And, and, and I want to I talk about this because as much as I enjoy um, I'm living and, and, and walking with Jesus. Um, well, one of the things that I tend to struggle with, and maybe you do too, is um, the separation between, all right, God, so you, what do you want me to do and what are you going to do? And, and what's the separation between the two, right? So, so we give our lives to Jesus, right? Psalm 37 verse 4, right, says, delight yourself in the Lord. Right? And, 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 and then it says this, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, I used to read that thinking, I'm going to get excited in Jesus. And then when I do, he's going to give me everything I want. Can I get an amen right now, church? Right? There was too many amens on that one. That's not cool. But, but actually, I, I reread it. And it says, delight yourself in the Lord, comma, and he, as a result of delighting yourself in him, now he's going to give you new desires. Right? The moment you start living for Jesus, if you delight yourself in the Lord, and then it says, and he will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> what is it? It's a, it's a heart transformation. Amen. When you give your life to Jesus, what he does is he does an inside work that is so transformational that all of a sudden you want new things that you didn't want before. Yeah. Now, you're, now you're praying, God, help me to have a successful marriage versus, man, God, she looks pretty too, you know? And I, I, I'm being serious. Our, our, our carnal, de our, our, our flesh desires things that aren't in line with the scriptures. Can I get an amen on that at least, right? Right? And so when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he begins to give us new desires. Amen. And our heart's desire becomes this, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. Amen? amen. So I, I want to talk to you about making a plan because we serve a God who is a great planner. He's a great planner. I mean, I, he, he's, he's so good at, at planning that ahead of time, he, he planned to cover your sins tomorrow. 20 seconds from now, he, he knows, ah, that's it. I'm going to cover it. It's called grace. Can you shout grace? grace? Yeah, he's that good. He's that good. And he's a great planner. I mean, could you imagine if God had made the earth, Adam and Eve are in the garden, and Adam and Eve say, God, why did you create us? And he goes, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I just, it kind of came to mind, I just threw it out there, you know, real quick, you know, and, and let there be man. But, but, whoa, that, that's what that looks like? Whoa, that's awesome. Could you imagine that? But instead, we, we know, we've heard the verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. It'll come up on a screen here in just a moment, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? A planner, a planner knows, right? A planner knows. I mean, I know, I know that's deep theology, right? But a planner knows because they've planned. He says, I, I, have, I have a plan for your life, right? And he says, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future 
and a hope. Can you give God some praise for that? He's that good. He's that faithful. Right? He's got good plans for you. And, and, and his plans, this is what they do. They result in your prosperity. They, they result in hope. And, and they result in future. He's always looking forward in your life. He's always saying, yeah, that did happen, but I'm going to take you through it. And then Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works it out for good for those who have been called according to his purpose, right? Yeah. And those he loves. I mean, he, he's faithful. He's that good. He's a planner. So much so, J- J- Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. What's he saying here? He's saying, hey, literally, you're, you may have been a, an accident to your parents, but you were planned by me. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, even before you were there, what does he say? He says, I consecrated you. That means he's saying, hey, I, I planned it for you to live a holy life before me. And then he tells Jeremiah this. He says, and Jeremiah, not just that, I appointed you to be a prophet. Even before you were in your mother's womb, I had a role for you to play in the kingdom of God. Did you know that God has a role for your life? Can I get an amen right now? Yeah. You believe that? Youth group, youth group, can I get an amen, youth group, right? He's got a, he's got a role for you. At a young age, wherever you're at, he's, he, he literally has plans and purposes for your life because he's that good at planning. He's intentional about planning. And so here's what he does. He gives us man and he gives us woman. That's it, right? And, and then what he does is he says this. He says, okay, I'm going to give you day and night, 24 hours a day. You're going to get some money. You're going to have some people around you, some relationships. And now God is saying, now that your heart is aligned with my mission, my vision, my purpose for your life, now I want you to be a good steward of the time, right, the money, and the relationships in your life. Are you tracking with me, church? Right? So, so, so this is what he says, right? And the reason why is because God knows if you plan, if you plan, you'll be more blessed. If you plan, you'll be more blessed. There's a few things that, that plans reveal. When you start planning, a couple things, and, and then we'll jump right in is, number one, plans reveal intention. Plans, they reveal intention, right? You're able to see that, oh, there's no accident here. And and, uh, uh, somebody who's planning is saying, what's my intention behind why I want to get to that place, that that finish line over there? What's my plan to get there? And and now, in order for me to really get there, I have to reveal my intention behind why I want to get there. Right? Because what's God's intention for you? He says welfare. For good, not to harm you. He says to give you a future and a hope. What is he doing? He's revealing his intention. He's intentional. He loves you that much. He loved, could you imagine if, just for a moment, if I said, Katie, get ready. We're going on a date, baby. And she's like, oh my gosh, are you serious, babe? And I'm like, yeah, we're going on a date. Tonight, 6 p.m., can't wait. And I get home, right? She's dressed up, ready to go. And I get her in the car, I open the door, bam, right? Come in, open the door. Boom, I do a little, I sometimes do a little dance. Like kind of a, kind of, kind of, it's kind of a white guy dance that I do sometimes. <laughs> You know, whatever. No, don't judge, you know, don't judge. I got white friends, man. I'm, I'm, we're cool. That's how it works. But get her in the car, man. We go, boom, and we're cruising down, and there they are. Right? We'll pull up and, and roll the window down. We're at McDonald's, right? <laughs> how terrible would that be, right? What would that show? This guy did not plan. He didn't plan. He didn't have intentions. He, he wasn't thinking ahead. Plans reveal intentions. Plans also reveal this. And if you're taking notes, write it down, please, uh, because you might need it as bad as I've needed this. Um, plans reveal roadblocks. When you make a plan, you decide. I know people that have great marriages, and they're still in marriage counseling. What are they saying? Hey, I have a plan to be married for the rest of my life. Yeah. What are they saying? I'm intentional. No, 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 we're not, we're not there because we're fighting right now, but we might be fighting next month. And so I'm trying to get ahead of this and, and, and have some wisdom for when we get there. Can I, can I hear the husband say amen right now, right? Amen. Right? They reveal roadblocks because all of us have roadblocks ahead. There's some things that, that, that you need to plan for far in advance. I read an article that said this, um, eight to 10 Americans have less, um, I, I want to say this right, um, Eight to ten Americans live paycheck to paycheck in America. 
Eight, eight out of 10, I'm sorry, eight out of 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. What is it saying? We're not really good planners, right? We're not, right? I know I'm not. And, and in fact, I'm going to tell you a quick story in just a second. But the other thing a plan reveals is this. A plan reveals cost and investment. I mean, do you remember in the book of Matthew when Jesus says this? He's like, hey, before you, you go ahead and build a house, he says, you better know the, the cost. Yeah. Right? Why? God wants us to be intentional. He wants us to be planners. It can't just be, oh, well, God's going to provide. Right? Because the alarm's going to go off at 6, and if you push the snooze, God's like, I was trying to provide by taking you to work. <laughs> right? Right? I, I'm getting spiritual now, huh? You wanted that word, huh? You were waiting. I was, yeah, that's exactly what I came for tonight. Katie and I got married May 22nd, 2011. It's going to be 10 years this May 22nd coming up. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I've considered divorcing my wife just so I could remarry my wife. I'm serious. I'm serious. Um, and, and, and here's the thing. Um, I, it's the best decision I've ever made on my own. Um, and I had these guys in my life because I was so, I made such stupid decisions. And maybe you were like me. And, and I had these guys in my life, they were called the core four. Could you say core four? core four? And there were these four people in my life. I'd meet with them once a month and tell them about my life, my issues, my drama. And as a teenager, believe it or not, there's a lot of drama. You know? <laughs> I know you didn't know that, but, but a lot of drama. So I'd meet with these guys and be like, hey, look, man, here's where I'm at. This is what's going on. You know, I kind of read my Bible sometimes, I'm doing this. Okay. Hey, I got a job at a warehouse. I was working at this warehouse. It was a Mexican, uh, Mexican a meat market. You know, uh, I was working shipping and receiving, and this is what I'm getting paid. And I mean, I put my business out there to these guys, right? And I'd be sitting there, okay, John, hey, you should consider this, or think about that, or think about this, you know? Well, well when it came to Katie, I said to them, I said, hey, look, this is, this is the girl. This is the girl I want to be with long term. She's the one, she's the one, she's the one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, right? They're like, Jonathan, you know what? We've helped you make a lot of decisions, but we're going to take a step back. you just got to pray about it and decide for yourself if this is somebody you want to be with. And I'm like, what, you don't like her? No, I'm joking. I didn't say that. I was like, okay, cool, you know. Dated this girl, fell in love, fell in love. Um, we get married. The only thing I had to plan, the only thing I had to plan was my honeymoon. That's it. I had a friend of mine who said, dude, I've got Hawaiian airline credits. I'll hook you up. You're going to Maui for your honeymoon. People, I went to, to Hawaii for my honeymoon. It was a blast. Yeah, it was a blast. And so I'm going I'm to run through this story real quick. And so, so it's my job to plan the honeymoon. Um, Katie is helping with the down payment for the apartment. Now, let me give you a little bit of like background on my, on my hot wife. Here's the way she is. So she's the kind of person that started her bank account when she was 11 years old. Yeah, annoying, right? <laughs> And then her parents sat down with her and say, you know, and said, everything that comes is from God and God wants to bless you. And she's like, okay. And, and they're like, okay, well, this is a checkbook. This is how you fill out a check, right? And I'm 20 years old. I'm like, how do you fill out a check? You know, dead serious. I, I wish I was lying to you, right? And so, so, so that was Katie. And when, when, when we were getting married, she said, Jonathan, we got to start. We got to start by sowing into God's house. And I was like, yeah, yeah, 10%, baby. She's like, no, no, 20 this is a big deal. We're getting married, babe. Praise God, we're getting married. And, and when we got married, I mean, she writes her tithe checks way in advance. I'm like, babe, we're in January. Why are you in June, girl? Just wait. <laughs> we don't even know if we got that money. But what is she doing? She's planning. She's considering. So anyways, we, 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 we get married. I mean, my, my pastor at the time, he's there, and I'm wearing chucks, and I'm up there, and I'm getting married to the girl in my dreams. And next thing you know, we get to the hotel, right, that we're staying at in downtown that some other lady paid for, and so we're there, wake up in the morning, get to the airport, Katie's like, hey, I'm so excited, so where are we staying? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, babe, I got it planned. I'm like, babe, when we get, babe, I, uh, it's, it's a condo, it's a condo, sick condo, beautiful condo, we're gonna be right by the water, it's gonna be incredible. So, so, so we, we're flying in the air, we land, and she's like, uh, did you get a car? I'm like, yeah, babe, I'm going to go grab, grab a car real quick. <laughs> Duh. You know? I walk over, and I'm at Hertz, and I'm like, hey, what's up? I'd like to rent a car. They're like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 23. They're like, you have to be 25 to, to rent a car. And I'm like, oh, devil. Because <laughs> isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do? We start calling on a devil, right? We're like, we planned. We were stupid. We're like, like, we, we were the stupid ones, right? But, but no, but it's the devil now, right? Now it's the devil. He got in the way. The devil trying to destroy my life, my family. Generations. Generations. And so... <laughs> 
And so we're there, and he's like 25. So I'm like, oh, heck, no, I'm going to Enterprise. I go to Enterprise. I'm like, yo, um, I, I need to rent a car real quick. My, I, actually, I need to rent it like now. My, 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 my wife's waiting for We just got married yesterday. Can you help me out? He's like, dude, you're 23. You need to have somebody be, uh, older than 25 to sign off on the car. And so before you know it, I turn around. Katie's sitting by a palm tree. And, you know, initially I thought she was on a photo shoot, obviously. But when I realized that she's got her luggage, and I look over, and she looks at me. And like the honeymoon thing started going away, <laughs> right? And, and so she's there, and I say, I see the shuttle roll up, and I go, oh, babe, here it is. No, we got to take the shuttle to the hotel. And she's like, babe, should we even jump on, on the shuttle? And I jump on the shuttle. I see her rolling her bag down. I come up. I'm looking at the guy in the driver's seat. I'm like, hey, bro, listen, I need your help. I was like, I, I, I thought I rented a, a condo, but I'm seeing now. I don't have the confirmation number. Any way you can give me a ride? He's like, the only place I can give you a ride to is this resort, that resort. And I'm like, oh, man, is there anything else? He's like, call the Maui Beach Hotel. And I'm like, well, that sounds pretty. <laughs> Maui Beach Hotel. He's like, yeah, they'll take, they, they might take cash. And I'm like, ah, oh, bro, I made it. You know, because I did the money dance. I planned that for sure, because we planned that. And I did the money dance where they put the dollars on you, you know, and you're dancing with your bride and they put the dollar. And so I had like $2,000 in cash. So I get to the Maui Beach Hotel, I open the doors, Katie gets in and she's furious obviously at this point. She's like, you did not plan this, right? And so we get in and there's a guy with his feet on top of this table, smoking a cigar in the lobby. And he's a soccer player and he's sweaty. And him and his buddy, they're like, nah. they're just laughing at him. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him like, be removed in Jesus' name. But they're just there. They're just there. And then so I go up to the counter. I say, please help me out, man. I, I need to get a room. I need to get a room. They're like, oh, do you have a credit card? I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't have a credit card. Um, I get paid tomorrow. This is how bad I was. I get paid tomorrow, but I'll give you cash. Could you help me out? She says, look, I'll help you out for, for the first two nights. Give me the cash. I'll put it on my card. How sweet of that lady, right? And she's like, unfortunately, though, we only have a smoking only room. And I'm like, that's fine. So we get up there, we get up there, man, and, and, and we're chilling. We're having the best honeymoon ever because I planned it, right? <sighs> and, and so I'll come back to that story in just a little bit, but, but the point that I'm making here is clearly I wasn't very good at planning. Can you pray for me, guys? <laughs> and that's exactly why I'm, I'm preaching on this because God wants us to be intentional. He wants us to plan so we can see some roadblocks, and, and, and he wants us to know the cost and the investment of things before we get into them. Right? Right? And in the same way, believe it or not, God wants you to plan your giving. Yeah. He wants you to plan your giving. This is what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Let each one of you give as they have made up in their own mind and purposed in their heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Can you get excited about that, guys, right now, right? So... So when Jason's up here and he's like, oh, yeah, man, we're going to take the offering. And then you hear these people go, woo, 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 Those, you know, few people that did that, what they were saying is, I planned for this. <laughs> That's what they said. They said, I planned for this. I, I was expecting, I came, I, it's already part of my budget plan. I planned to give. And the reason why it's important to plan to give, it's not because so the church can get rich, right? Here's why it's important for you to plan. The reason why it's important for you to plan is so that you don't give emotionally. God's trying to guard your heart. He's saying, hey, when you come to church, don't come to church and just, the bucket comes by, you're like, cool, or ah, 10 bucks, cool, amen. You know, God bless you, God. Love you, man. You know? He's like, no, I want you to plan it because, because I don't want you to make unnecessary decisions with your finances and feel put under compulsion, right, or, or give under compulsion. He's like, I don't want you to give that way. I want you to be a cheerful giver. But in, or, in order to become a cheerful giver in the kingdom, you have to have a plan. So he says, have a plan, pray about it, think about it. What will I give today, right? I've had people um, say to me, like, you know, I just feel like God put it on my heart to, to just give my rent money and trust him. And I'm like, bro, you're not hearing from God, bro. <laughs> now, and, and I know that's probably a, a sensitive conversation topic or whatever, but, but the point that I'm making is I'm saying, hey, hey, let's, 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 let's plan. Let's be good stewards of what it is God has given us, and let's come to church with a plan to say, Oh, the next, time, the next time Jason gets up here and says, hey, it's time to give you a, woo! And everybody's like, let's practice that real quick on three. One, two, three. Woo! Yeah, like that. Like, exactly like that. Exactly like that. But it only happens when we plan. Can I get a big amen right now? Amen. But, but here are some big distractions that take place when you don't have a plan. 
all right? And, 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 and when you do have a plan, you can be guarded uh, against these things. Number one is this, hype. Hype. If you don't have a plan, you'll follow the hype all day, every day. The next big church, the next cool thing, the next cool style. You hear the hype, you follow the hype. You want to know why? Because you don't have a plan. Right? right. You, you, fall, I mean, I, you, you fall for the hype every time when you don't have a, a plan. Another thing is, is opinions. When you don't have a plan, someone's going to tell you who you are if you haven't planned already who you are. If you haven't decided to say, I'm a daughter of God, I'm a son of God, I'm a man of God, God has called me to be a provider. You know what, God, God can use me even in the midst of my troubles right now. If you haven't decided in your heart already, someone will give you an opinion about who you are and you'll be like, yeah, you're right. Man, it, it'll distract you. It'll, it'll distract you if you don't have a plan. The next thing is this, if you don't have a plan, guilt is another distractor. Someone will guilt you into doing stuff you don't want to do. You'll, you'll be guilty into things. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll live and, and, and you'll, you'll allow people to put shame and guilt on you. But if you have a plan, you go like this. You go, no, I know where I'm going. And, oh, well, man, you should be doing that. Oh, oh, yeah, but, but I, know, I know where I'm, God's called me here, so that's not, I'm not going to let that sit in my spirit. Can I get a big amen right now? Amen. There are certain things for a season of my life where I would talk to people, and they'd be like, oh, Jonah, you know, they say something negative towards me. And I'd have to say to them, hey, bro, I, I don't receive that. I appreciate you sharing that with me, but I don't receive that. And then there were other times I'd look at someone and have to be like, oh, you know what? I, I receive that. It's hard for me to receive that, but I receive that word over my life in Jesus' name. What, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that I'm staying away from the distractors. Amen? Is this making sense, church? Is this making sense? Yes. Right? The distractors will mess you up. Uh, they, they, they'll come into play and, and, and really um, send you in circles if you don't have a plan. And God... God planned for you to enjoy this life. And, and he's called you to be a steward of those things. And so when you do have a plan, here's the result of having a plan. Number one, focus and discipline. You get focused, you get disciplined. You find yourself more focused and disciplined. You, you know where you're going. You know what you're doing. Hey, there's times you get insecure. Who doesn't, right? There's times you get discouraged. But hey, you look at the plan. You say, this is where we were, where we were going. This is what we said we're going to do. We're going to keep our word in doing this. And there was one year... Uh, Katie and I had this goal. Uh, it was a giving goal, right? So, so when I first married Katie, here's another thing about my wife that's incredible. Um, I would say, okay, so we got to make a, a deal on how much money we got to make this year, you know, as a family. And Katie says, no, 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 we don't do it based upon that. We do it based upon how much money are we going to give this year. And then we can gauge how much money we, we need to make to be able to meet that goal. I know she's awesome, huh? So now you get what I'm saying, the divorce thing, when I said that earlier, I hope you weren't offended by that. But do you see what I'm saying now? I just want to remarry this girl. I mean, it'd be awesome, right? But focus and discipline. The next thing is this. You make pressure-free decisions. Pressure-free decisions. You, when you plan, you put it in the budget. And so as a result, you're like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to go out with flat tire. I planned a little emergency fund, 150 bucks, just in case that happened. Pressure-free decision-making. You can give to people and do it pressure-free when you plan. You can be a blessing to others without a little bit of that, oh, I shouldn't have done that. It's a little crazy that I did that. Wait till my wife finds out. Anybody else been there before? Man, <laughs> I've been there, man. I've been there, right? And so what we're doing is, what we're doing here is we're saying when we create a plan, we're creating a guard to keep us on track with where God is taking us. Amen, church? Amen. And the reason I'm telling you this story, right, the, the, the honeymoon story, is because I need you to see how severely damaged I should be, if not by the grace of God, for the way I don't plan, right? The next thing is this, um, joy. When you plan, you can live in joy. When you plan, you can, you can be joyful. You can live life um, more free, right? You can live life without, without um, um, living with, with that, that, that thing in your heart that kind of builds up where you're like constant anxiety. Is, is it going to work? Is it not? Did I forget something? Like, but when you plan, joy is a result of planning. And the last thing is this, patience. Patience. Because now you got to wait for the plan God has given you to come to pass. Can I get a big amen on that one, right? Yeah. It's a big deal. And that's why Habakkuk, uh, you know the story in chapter 2, verses 2 through 6. I, I want to read it to you in just um, a, a, a moment. But, but God, God comes through for me. And I, I got to tell you what happened. Should I tell you the rest of the story now? I should have. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you the rest of the story. So, so we're there, and um, Katie and I are taking a limousine um, 
around Maui. It's called a bus, obviously a city bus, whatever, but limousine. <laughs> it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Can I get a big amen? That's what people say who don't plan. It's all about perspective. You know, you're like, yeah, so you didn't plan. That's cool. Yeah. All right, bro. Right? And guys, please don't take this wrong. I'm not saying that there aren't things that come up. You just, you can't. There's some things everybody knows, right? There's some things you just couldn't plan for. You're just like, dude, I could, if I tried to plan, I couldn't have planned that to happen. That was crazy, right? I mean, I get that, so I'm not talking about that. But just bear with me here, all right? So we're on that limousine, and we're in Maui. We're cruising around, and I get a call from my pastor. He's like, hey, Jonathan, what's up, man? I'm like, oh, what's up? He's like, man, are you enjoying your honeymoon? I'm like, oh, man, it's great. Right? Yeah, it's great, Pastor. Everything's fun. Oh, my, dude, we're actually by the ocean right now on a bus. But we're, on a, we're, on, we're right by the ocean right now. He's like, oh, that's awesome, man. Guess what? You're not going to believe this. And I'm like, what's up, Pastor Matthew? He's like, dude, I'm in Hawaii, too. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. He's like, dude, why don't you, where are you staying at? And I'm like, I'm staying at the, at the, I'm staying at the resort. Uh, <laughs> I did not say Maui Beach Hotel. You know, I didn't say that. Because, you know, I'm just, I just was, anyways, it's none of his business, right? That's another thing they say. That's another thing they say. That's another thing they say. But, or we say, we say. Um, and so we're there. We're there, right? And, and, and he's on the phone. He's like, hey, could you come down and meet me for dinner? Right? So I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what time? He's like, well, get here just in the next maybe 30 minutes to an hour. We'll have dinner. I'm like, I'm looking at the bus. I'm like, man, it's going to take us another hour and a half, just in two hours just to get there, you know? So he's like, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. And I used to hate it when people call me buddy, you know? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Right? So he's like, hey, buddy. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, um, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, praise God, man. Everything's good. And God is good. God is good and everything's good. And, and he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. He's like, I don't know why. I get a sense something's off, man. Are you, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, no, bro. Everything's good. We actually went to the volcano. The volcano thing, we rode the bikes down, dude. We kissed up there, all that. Two clouds, double clouds, double sunset. We were so high up there. It was just, wow. It was amazing. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Haleakala. The, the, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, but, dude, I just feel something's off. Is everything okay? So at this point, I knew clearly tech, you know, Katie must have used her BlackBerry. You probably don't know what that is anymore, but she texted him or something, I'm sure. She says she didn't, but whatever. Um, so I'm on the phone with them, and I'm like, you know what, Pastor Matthew, uh, <laughs> when you don't make a plan, you make this face. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not okay. It's not okay. He's like, what's going on? No, no, no. Is everything okay? Hey, anything that's going on, don't worry about it. It's going to be, what's going on? And I'm like, I just did this. I lied to kid. I didn't plan. I didn't know. And I'm on the bus, dude. And I'm pulling the thing. Bing, bing. I'm like, there's a guy not here. Freaking pull over, dude. You know, like, I'm pulling the thing, you know. The back opens. I jump out. I'm like, <laughs> and Katie's behind me with our luggage. She's like. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Just take a taxi. Get down here. Get down here. And I'm like. All right, dude, I, 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 you know, I'll get down there. We'll have dinner. He's like, yeah, dinner for sure. Can't wait. So I, 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 I take a taxi. We get down there. As soon as we get out of the taxi, we end up at the Grand Wailea Resort. My man JB was staying there. That's Justin Bieber for those of you who don't know. <laughs> at the time when Selena was trying to, to be with him, but we know Haley Bieber's the one. And so I get out and this lady working at the hotel, comes up and puts a lay on my neck. She puts a lay on Katie's neck. And Pastor Matthew's like, Jonathan, come with me. Katie, go up and see Caroline. And so Katie goes up to see Caroline at the hotel room. I'm walking with Pastor Matthew, and I'm like, yeah, man. So, dude, I lied to her. You know, and he's like, oh, man, that was what happened. I'm telling him what happened. He's like, dude, come here. You got to check this out. They have, an, they have a restaurant here in the middle of the water. You're going to have dinner there tonight with Katie. We won't be there. And I'm like, yeah, you probably don't want to be there, you know? <laughs> And so I get it. He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. I don't want to waste. I, I want to make sure I'm so, so, okay. So, so, so I got to hurry up. So, so then, so then, um, he's like, you're going to have dinner there. Dude, don't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, man. It was just, but I got to tell you what happened. So this happened. And he's like, no, 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 dude, take off your shoes. And I'm like, bro, I'm not taking off my shoes, you know? And so he's like, take off your shoes. I'm like, all right, man, take off my shoes. He's like, feel the scent. It doesn't it feel different. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But can I tell you my sins now? You know? <laughs> So I'm like, hey, this is what happened, this is what happened. And, and I'm trying to talk to him. And finally, I realized he's on purpose, not trying to respond to my, my pain. And he's like, Jonathan, look, you can't fix it now. He's like, you can't fix it now, but, but don't worry, don't worry, I, don't worry. It's, it's, it's all going to work out. So we keep walking. We end up at this, 
um, walking in, into this beautiful hallway, and um, he's like, dude, you got to check this out. He takes me to the room, and it was room 0021, 0021. And so we get in there, and he goes, dude, this is where you're staying at for the next five nights. Oh. And Katie walks in, and Katie's like, what? In my head, I'm thinking, I mean, we haven't even held hands. <laughs> enough said. That's enough said. You know? I think we air high five one time at the top of the mountain. I pretended I kissed her, but it didn't really happen. <laughs> and, so, and so here we are, room 0021. And here's what I realized. When you don't plan, when you don't plan, God still extends his grace. Right? Because haven't we all missed it sometimes? Yeah. Haven't we all kind of messed up a little bit? You know, we, we, we wanted to do something and get it done a certain way, and just, it, just, it just didn't work out, right? So I, I came back darker than I already am, and the honeymoon was great. Katie had a tan. You know, it was just, every, everything just worked out so good, but not because of my planning, but because of his grace. Because God used someone who does plan for his life, who said, I, you know what? When you plan, guys, another big thing that happens, and this is something Pastor Matthew would tell me, is it creates margin for your life. Creating margin, right? You leave an hour earlier, right? If you see a flat tire, you actually have the time to pull over and help someone fix their tire because you left that early, right? That's margin, right? You create space to make a difference. You plan your giving because you're saying, okay, oh, there's a bonus coming. And Jesus saying, I'm going to use that to be a blessing to God's house. But I want to plan it ahead of time. That way it's not going to hurt our family. I'm not making a stupid decision here. And I, I want to I plan this, right? And then we become intentional Christians living for Jesus. Amen? I want to close with this. Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, can I, it's three more minutes. Is that cool? Okay, cool. Just making sure. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 through 6 says this. And you've heard this before. Write down the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a, a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the future and will not prove false. So first thing we're going to do together, and maybe you and your family will do this tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, and maybe pray on this. But the first thing we want to do when we create a plan is we want to have clarity. Right? We want to simplify this thing. Right, because let me tell you, the last, uh, the first year of my marriage was pretty miserable. I got to just be honest. Um, it, it started the way it started, and to be honest, it kind of had an effect through through our first year of marriage. And once we started sitting down, and and making plans, and and we started looking ahead and saying, okay, what are we gonna do here? What's our next step as a family? And 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 to be really honest with you, um, I know the Bible talks about you know women. To submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives. But there's another verse in there that says, um, submit to one another mutually, right? It's a mutual submission. And I'm so grateful that I wasn't too cool to not submit to my wife in the area of planning, right? In the area of planning, we sat down together. She said, babe, no, no, no. Like God wants to bless us, but we have to be smart with our money. We have to be smart with our time. We have to be smart with, with our relationships. And you know what I started finding is, is a lot of, a lot of my walk with God is affected because of the people I'm walking with, right? And maybe, maybe tonight, you, maybe, maybe the challenge tonight is, is let's start changing some, maybe some of the friends we walk with, right? Maybe it's making a plan to say, these are the kind of people I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself around. I'm a, that, you know what? This is the kind of person I'm planning to be. And, and these are the small input goals that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug into my life in, in order to get to the place God is leading me towards. So if you wouldn't mind, with, with every head bowed, every eye closed right now, just right where you're at. And, and if you wouldn't mind, as, as the worship team comes up, we're going to worship a little bit. But maybe you'd say, man, I, I haven't really had a plan, to be honest. I, I've, I've kind of done things on on my own I'm still working on delighting myself in the Lord and and I'm receiving these new these new desires that he's given me I'm still working on I'm still there I'm right there I, I, but I, I know I'm surrendering my life to Jesus if that's you today I want to I want to pray for you in just a moment I I want to actually I, I'd like to personally pray for you tonight and the prayer team will come up and, and we'll all pray for you or maybe you'd say, you know what, man, I'm, I'm married and, 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 you know, life gets so busy and I'm working and I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm trying to get things done. And, and man, I, now, we, now we're having kids and it just life gets so busy. And, 
And, and maybe tonight you'd say, but man, it's time for me to, to set a plan for what time with my, my family looks like, what time with, with my friends looks like. Maybe, maybe that's you tonight. If that's you, I, I, I want to pray with you in just a moment. Or maybe you'd say, man, to be honest, there's just some things that I, I didn't even, I, I, I'm a planner. I'm, I'm, not, I'm that organized person, but there's some things that have just hit me that I couldn't have planned for. I don't know what to do or how to do it. I just want to encourage you, man, he is so good. He is so good that, that he planned the end at the beginning, and that, that he knows your middle right now. And he says, I've got grace for you. I, I can extend my, my, my arm of provision in your life. Maybe, maybe you're like me. You like adventure. You like excitement. You like just going for it and doing it. Before you know it, you're, you're hurting people. You didn't know you would hurt. And you were just trying to have fun. And you'd say, but, but you know what? I'm going to start getting focused and disciplined in my walk with God. And then lastly, if maybe it's been giving. You just kind of give how you give, and that's cool, you know, and you kind of, all right, great, we're good. Maybe tonight you'd say, I want to be intentional about the way I give. So with every head bowed, every eye closed right now, if, that's, if you're one of those people that would say, man, tonight I want to start planning some areas of my life because God has given me a new heart. He's given me a new mind. And now it's time for me to, to start being a good steward of the 24 hours, uh, of the money that hits the account, of the people I do life with. Or maybe you're the one that says, man, dude, to, 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 de- to be honest, I haven't even made a decision to follow Jesus yet. Then I want to invite you also to to come down I want want to pray for you in just a moment so with every head bowed every eye closed if that's you today and you want to make a decision to follow Jesus I want to I'm speaking to that group today that's saying hey I want to make a decision to follow Jesus if that's you today with every head bowed and every eye closed I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me and it's not some magical prayer that changes things it's the sincerity of your heart surrender inviting God into your life that begins to change everything so if that's you today you want to make a decision to follow Jesus. Would you mind just repeating this prayer after me and and our church all together is going to say these words with you. We're here to encourage you, uplift you. So repeat after me and say, Dear God, today I make a decision to follow you. God, I want to delight in you. Jesus, give me new desires. Holy Spirit, lead me. Father God, forgive me. I've sinned. I've fallen short. Jesus, you died for me. And now I'm going to live for you. Oh, come on, George. Can you give that to those people a round of applause in God's house? They made a decision to follow Jesus. Yeah.